to remind everyone, you should share your yeah. game changing experience in all of your social media networks. We offer free, blazing fast internet speed powered by PLDT. Certain, and definitely, last but not the least, be sure to check out and register your risk that may possible in our station. You can use it to play your news, tap them over our booth, and get exclusive stamps and earn your way to our exciting prices. Okay, again, for blazing speed for the internet, you can use our partner's internet by part by PLBT. The SS90 is displayed on the screen right now. It's developed in 2017, and the password is changing the game PLBT. Again, you will use our free and very fast Wi-Fi using the following information displayed on the screen. Check the mobile and upload. Malaman natin kung nagiging worse na ako na. Oh, dumadaan yung... Ang importante yung upload. Upload. Okay, okay. Okay. Command C? Yung pad ko lang ito, yung password. Apo. May sila. Baka mag... Dev on... Capital po. Ah, sumang. 1, 2, 3, 4. Hindi. Hindi, yung parang yung PLD side. Next time. Saan? Yun, yung parang ahas. Ah, ito? Yung PLD. Okay. Start na ba? Okay. Pinitest run lang na. If you ever brought it, you can call it a problem. Technical problem. Okay, guys. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. Okay, thank you, sir, Paul. Nakain ako nito. Tinanong ko yung copy, pero hindi ko tinanong yung face. Siguro control, command, command B naman siguro na. Basta yung control naging command. Ah, okay. Tuloy-tuloy na yung live.
Chinyar ko ni link eh. Sabi ko sa kanila, pag official start, share na naman yung live stream. Masaka? Yun na eh. Focus mo. Aldo, ginanin ko. Pinakita ko sa iyo. Ikaw. Try nga natin. Paano mo? Ano ba yan? Hello mga papi! Uy, Good morning! Good morning! Asan tayo mo ka pwesto? Doon, doon sila. Sa kabila. Oh, sige, sige. Parang baba mo konti. Baba mo konti. Wala, ito lang muna, chillin muna tayo. Kaya mamaya maging hectic yan pag nag-breakout session. Kasi dyan nung ano eh, maghihiwa-hiwalay lahat ng social media. Saka huwag muna natin, saka huwag muna natin pressure yung sarili natin, baka magkamali tayo. Hindi natin alam yung pasigot-sigot itong sa akin. Hindi kasi hindi tayo Kung walang ano, kung walang magre-reply dito, tayo nilang mag-post ng live stream. Kinakain talaga ako nito. Parang yung, ito yung zoom in, di ba? Ito yung app mo lang. Siyempre, keyboard din ang papalit yan, pre. <laughs> Software buttons nagpapalit, pero keyboard. Down.
May posting rights ka pre, no? Yun naman pala, hindi mo sinabi sa akin. Alam mo naman pala basic nito, pre. <laughs> Siyempre, yung tayo ko na makapunta ka sa top grade. Hindi yung sa isa ko. Easy, Popsy. Ito rin, magaling. Uwiti rin ito mag-post social media. Parang, uh, parang ano yan eh. Parang siyang uh, Joseph. Parang siyang Joseph. Paano mo nalalaman kung sino yung mga nag-post? Yung Oo, oh, makikita mo yung pang oh, posted by. Sa ako rin nag sa kanya na Si... Ano yung mga bigla? Si... Edward. Oh, Edward, Edward. Akala ko ano siya? Hindi ni Edward. Si... Akala ko hindi hindi siya sa social media. Akala ko sa social media. Hindi. Social siya. Tapos ngayon siya yung tagakuha ng ganyan. Tapos nagpalit ng logo. Ramihan yung ano. Let me start in a few minutes. But before that, don't forget to officially download our event app on Google Play and App Store. So just search Devlin Sonic 2017 and you're good to go. Also, don't forget to share with us your super crazy experience here in Devlin Sonic 2017. Don't forget to use the hashtag changing the game videos. SMX dito, no? Sa Wawa, so yun, hirap na hirap tayo takbo-takbo nun. Pero so far yung pinakamagandang SMX na napundan ko yung Sarpa. Hindi siya kasing laki ng sa Wawa, pero mas maganda pa sa SMX pa ko. Oh? Parang ano? May SMX pa dun? Mag-data mo na kayo kung sakaling mabagal yung ano, backup kayo ng ano, nag-set up pa kami doon ng ano namin. Ano problema? Wala problema. Ah, basta okay kayo dito, over tayo social media, yung isa si Abigay. Wala ko kaya pa daw yung mobile na pinag na meron. Okay, nakain din siya. Check mo yung speed. Wait lang. Ah, 
hashtag. Kahit dadatsa ng ganito, no? O, oh, ihiwalay ko pa na hashtag. Hindi, okay na yan. Tapos hashtag na lang sa baba. Oh, ulang pa pala ito eh. Ito ba sa amin? Yan, para si... Uy, wala! <laughs> Ba't wala? Copy, 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 tapos refresh mo page. Basta <laughs> Game changers, as we gather in this mind opening event, let us not forget to give things to our God. Ladies and gentlemen, we request everyone to please stand for the invocation to be led by Ms. Krisha to be followed by the singing of the Philippine National Assembly. Thank you for the opportunity to learn, so that we'll be able to impart it to others. Thank you for the opportunity to explore new technologies that we may be able to innovate in our respective companies. Thank you for the opportunity to meet people that we may build connections that would benefit us in the long run. Lastly, thank you for making this event possible and for guiding the organizers in preparing for all that's needed in order that we give value to the participants. We ask that you guide each and every one of us today and tomorrow that we may have more knowledge until the end of this event. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
everyone, please take your seat and prepare yourself for the biggest developer conference in the Philippines. Blockchain, analytics, artificial intelligence, DevOps, and cybersecurity. Cue of the rising trends that mobilize the digital economy of our present time. Today, as we gather everyone and empower ourselves to innovate and migrate in these game changing trends that enable our nation to collaborate and thrive on economic growth and opportunities from across the globe. Safe, support, safe. This is Demo Summit 2017. Hashtag Change the Game PH. Ladies and gentlemen, to formally open the Developers Connect Summit 2017, to take us through the innovation we want to achieve, to bolster our collaboration and leadership, let's welcome. The founder and president of Teflon Philippines. Give him a resounding round of applause, Mr. Winston Damarillo. Good morning. Are you guys awake? Are you guys awake? All right. So, first of all, welcome to. DevCon 2018. We're very, very excited to have everyone this morning. Uh, first of all, before anything else, I wanted to thank the volunteers and the organizers of DevCon. I think you guys are out to meet yourself yet again. Congratulations to you guys. If you guys see people in, in purple shirt or again, uh, please give them a hug. Okay, but not to type. Uh, because DevCon is always be powered by volunteerism. I am really, really proud that every year we break a record and we get you here and we get a chance to talk to you uh, at that point. So, very excited to kick off uh, this year's event. Uh, I think this year, uh, the hashtag change the game really takes a really important meaning to us. So, I just wanted to just quick up uh, in the next few days and also wanted to give you a challenge. Because this is the year that start ensuring that we, the geeks, and the geek Filipinos take charge of our digital future. And with that, we're going to talk about the four things uh, that will drive this going forward. So it is my pleasure and it's my honor uh, to talk to you guys uh, about this and, and, and go through that. So let me just start really quick. Don't put the slides up. Here you go. So, the new hashtag, changing the game, and the new terms for you guys, the geeks, is really the challenge and the opportunity for us to be game changers. And the reason why that's very, very important 
is that our landscape, the Philippines and ASEAN, right? We just had the ASEAN conference. Our landscape is changing. Right? This is the new digital Filipino. We're now not engaged country. We're becoming the most mobile equipped country in the world. In fact, it's a lot of Indonesia. Right? They need the Philippines to two fronts. They have more reliant on mobile phones and they have worse traffic than the Philippines. But this is the new landscape. The Filipinos have become more reliant on mobile phones. We're using it more and more every day. We're beginning to count on digital energetics. And we're about to see massive shifts, massive changes in the way people can, uh, enjoy our daily lives, the way we go to shop, the way we go to restaurants and find things. And it's really important that as that change comes to the Philippines, that digitally driven change comes to the Philippines, that we play an important role. Right? And, and for that to happen, we need you. We need to mobilize our, the geeks, right? We need to take charge of this. We don't want to be colonized yet. Around the world, there's a lot of examples, right? Um, money is going away. Money is becoming digital. In China, $3 trillion of transaction is now that on QR code. The new Chinese does not understand what a credit card is. Right? And the millennials in China find credit card incredibly inconvenient, or money, cash, incredibly inconvenient. But that's going to happen to us too. We're beginning, we have the beginnings, right, of the need to do that. In another part of the world, India now has 100% IDs in biometric. Right? Every single Indian over 18 years old can now be digitally identified. They now have a hope in the internet. Right? They cannot claim sovereignty over their IDs. Right? They can now transact as they need it. Right? This is also coming to us, and it's happening in the Philippines. And it is these four technologies that we're going to cover this two days that's going to be foundations for that. So I strongly, strongly encourage everyone to learn, talk, interact, to ask really difficult questions, to try, you know, write your own code, and more importantly, envision yourself in the driver's seat. Not in the back seat, not in the bus, not on the back of the jeepney, but in the driver's seat. Close your eyes, think, think about this. What if I have one right in this one for? How do I do this? How do I think about a new technology like blockchain? How do I think about Running analytics so I understand what's going on. How do I protect my intellectual property, you know, cybersecurity problems? And then how do I encourage my entire team to work together in DevOps? We get to talk about that in these two days. Right? And unfortunately, you know, two days is not enough. Two days is just a starting point. So I really want to make the most out of this because it's not enough, it's not just an opportunity for you to learn satisfy your intellectual curiosity. It's the anchor point for you to improve on your careers. It's an anchor point for you to help your companies and your workforce to become resilient and survive with digital transformation. And more importantly, and this is because we are game changers, it should become the anchor point for you to drive your own digital destiny. And that's the, that's the, that's the goal we had at Devcon. We started a long time ago. Is for geeks to help geeks. Uh, not only to succeed, not only to survive, but to succeed, and more importantly, to be. So this year we're declaring DevCon Geeks, DevCon Changemakers. We're here to lead. So I'll just take you through a, a, a couple of quick things uh, that we wanted to do. Uh, I again wanted to thank the organizer of this event. This year, we want to bring back what we want to do with DevCon to begin with bring the global talent to the Philippines. Bring the world-class leaders, world's top leaders in technology, in software development, in community development, and in entrepreneurship back to the Philippines so that we can collaborate with them right here 
and we're beginning to accomplish that. We're really excited that we're going to do more and more of this this year. DevCon this year has expanded. Not only are we keeping uh, breaking the records we do in attendance here in the summit, this year we've nationalized DevCon. We've had DevCon in Davao, in Iloilo, in Cagayan de Oro, and we're hoping next year we'll do it to the rest of the country. But this is our mission. Step one of our mission is break the global balance in the Philippines with you and have them work with you to change the game. And in this particular goal, for the next two days, we're going to start with what I consider to be the most disruptive technology in digital transactions. And this is going to be most significant in how the world will change digitally for us. And I strongly encourage you to think beyond blockchain, think beyond cryptocurrency when you think about blockchain. It's not about Bitcoin, it's not about Ethereum, it's not about ICO. It could be part of it, but blockchain is a fundamental technology that will be an engine, an infrastructure, and a mechanism for us to really change the way we do business. As far as I'm concerned, you know, when we talked about the World, or the world Economic Forum, we talked about the fourth industrial revolution. I think blockchain is the fourth internet revolution. The internet started as a place to get information, then it evolved to be the place where we get interaction, and then the internet became the place to have social media connections. The internet is about to become where we do transactions. And if we're going to do transact over the internet, the fundamental capability that allows us to do that in a democratic, democratized kind of way, meaning you don't have to be very large companies to be a part of this, is blockchain. This allows everyone to be a part of the transactions that's happening on the internet. So, strongly encourage for you to participate in that. And as you think about blockchain, there's another concept that's really good for you to think about. Is the idea that uh, big data By the way, we write software so we can change it dramatically. And we need to have a system that does that. And the DevOps, and the DevOps learning you're going to hear about today is not just the tools, but also the methodology, but more importantly, the culture of DevOps. Right? It's the idea that I prefer to share. I prefer to be lazy and not do things over and over again. That I prefer to have automation when I can. And I prefer to use less infrastructure when I can make that happen. So have fun. We have a great set of global thought leaders that's going to talk to you this afternoon about DevOps. And it's going to be fun and interesting time to do that. We have an opportunity to do that on. Uh, we have machines here, the booth that tells you about the, the technology that makes that happen, and then people that really practice DevOps. As we start counting on our technology, as we start to say, hey, I'm going to change the game, I'm going to change the game efficiently with DevOps, you also want to protect what you're creating. We want to protect what we have in our enterprise.
right? And whether we like it or not, hackers are bound. Like digital assets, digital technology is grown and subject to hacking, subject to theft, subject to fraud. So we want to balance your knowledge, we want to balance your understanding uh, to ensure that whatever it is we do can be protected. And cybersecurity has advanced phenomenally in the last five years. And again, we have an opportunity tomorrow to talk about cybersecurity. We have global experts of cybersecurity that's going to be here to share. That has evolved quite a bit. It's no longer a place to do data leaks, it's a place to do analytics, to understand. And it's an important piece to start because from analytics comes automation, machine learning, and I'm afraid to use this term AI.
a lot of good did come from it. Uh, there's an equal opportunity now, I think, with this technology for the first time since the dawn of the web, since the dawn of the internet, to have an equal impact. So I'm really excited to share this with you uh, uh, at a conceptual level. Uh, and, and to tell you about how you can get involved in, in this project as well. Let's see. Let me step back. All right, so I wanted to start first by just kind of giving you a really quick one-on-one -on -one immersion into what uh, uh, blockchain technology is about, which, again, some of you, as Vincent mentioned, might have heard of Bitcoin, might have heard of other cryptocurrencies. These are important applications of blockchain technology, but what's going on underneath, right? And can we use that technology for, some, for other purposes, right? But, uh, other than just payments, can we use it to really build, started to call community databases, right? Community infrastructure. So let me take you through a quick one-on-one -on -one of that. Uh, so there's two deep concepts inside of what people today are calling blockchain technology. The first of those are distributed ledgers, right? And a distributed ledger is a very special kind of a distributed database, if you will. Uh, it is, uh, imagine a database, for example, that... That's what's really different. Like, like a lot of technologies out there, I mean, how many here of you here have ever had roots on a database system, right? Probably most of you, uh, or, or on, a, on a technology system. You get to play God. You get to change the rules. You get to change the history of what's happened. Well, the real world doesn't work that way, right? We want to have trustworthy information systems. We want to know that when there's a, a, a record of me selling my house, that's not something that you know, one of us has a, that can break in and change that, in, you know, overnight, and suddenly Julian loses the house that I sold, right? So that's what's magic about using this kind of distributed ledger concept. Um, and there's a lot more to this, like how do we decide which transactions get written, what happens if two are proposed at the same time. These are called consensus mechanisms, uh, and they differ quite a bit. You'll hear things like proof of work, Byzantine fault tolerance. These are all kind of like inside you know, stories inside of how blockchain but at an outside level, as a developer, it's really this kind of distributed transaction ledger. The second part about blockchain technology that's really cool and has really drives a lot of value is smart contracts. And smart contracts are a way of writing a piece of software that gets deployed to everybody in the network, right? And uh, that that is software that runs autonomously, it runs on its own, and it might run once, it might run continuously, but it looks for changes in the it looks for certain kinds of transactions. It looks for things that get written to the ledger, and if certain conditions are met, we'll write another entry, right? Uh, or maybe an easier example to describe is that of an insurance agreement. So let's say you have a farmer, uh, and he buys uh, weather insurance from an insurance company. Uh, in the case where there's a drought, uh, he wants to make sure that he's covered for his losses. So there's a smart contract that's entered into by both parties. It's deployed across the network. At the end of the growing season, they, uh, uh, they, it, it's run across the entire network. 
if that, that program asks, if, was there a drought? And if so, I, I, it does this by checking weather.com or checking one of the other weather sites. Uh, and if, if the network comes to agreement as a consensus that yes, there was a drought, yes, this transaction should go through, then automatically written to the ledger is a transfer of $10,000 from the insurance company to the farmer. And this is a way of automating a lot of things that we're used to, to saying, well, that, that is a human level process. That's something that depends upon a human at the insurance company uh, waiting till the end of the growing season to then send it to me. But by doing this through a distributed ledger, we have a chance to, to actually improve the auditability of systems like this. No more um, hidden uh, terms and some special contracts that companies use to weasel out of their commitments, right? Uh, no more kind of, oh, the company went out of business and so it can't pay. Uh, but you can define all sorts of interesting uh, uh, types of relationships, types of contracts, types of financial instruments using these technologies. Um, but as you notice, again, so far I've been able to describe these technologies without talking about cryptocurrency. The cryptocurrencies are one application of this. Uh, the way that a system like Bitcoin or Ethereum keeps track of who owns which currencies is by maintaining this giant database that says, you know, you have so many Bitcoin, or this Ethereum token is owned by this key, this uh, private key, that sort of thing, the right? Uh, and smart contracts are the systems that people are starting to use to build automation on top of these systems. But what we're finding is that uh, uh, there's challenges if you try to use those systems at a scale the size of the entire internet, but if you try to use them for business networks, say community networks, where people, for example, the people in this room, you're here because you walked through that door. You're here because you have a common interest in hearing about technology. You're here because we've agreed to be part of a community, right? And so there's much simpler technology tools that you can use to come to a convergence. And this is why the business community is getting really excited about this. Uh, the business community is comprised of lots of uh, communities, essentially, uh, that conduct trade, that conduct business, that, that uh, send assets around, you know, things like the banking community, things like, uh, you know, the, 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 say, the real estate community. Uh, and these are all communities that have ledgers in them, that typically they've depended upon independent ledgers and a reconciliation step later to make sure that everything is in sync. But by using a common distributed ledger, we guarantee things are in sync across an entire industry at a time. And that's what's really cool. So let me give you some examples, kind of real link potatoes examples of projects that are using these kinds of technologies today. Right? So the first is cross-border payments. Now, this is you know, remittances or payments between two businesses. Today, the way that you send money across borders is a very kind of hacky kind of thing. Um, it starts by sending a message through a network like SWIFT, uh, and then the two banks kind of reconcile their systems many days later, sometimes five days, sometimes just three days, uh, and say, okay, yeah, the transaction actually clear. And this means for a lot of people and a lot of businesses, you don't get access to your cash to be able to work with it for three days. Well, with a distributed ledger at the heart of uh, uh, many of these kinds of systems, you can move that kind of confirmation step to five minutes. So you're seeing not only organizations like SWIFT uh, reinventing themselves as blockchain technology companies, really, as distributed ledgers. You're seeing new entrants into this field, companies like Ripple, uh, uh, other startup companies that are starting to say, uh, uh, or Manetico, who is one of our members who are doing this in India, as payment networks between banks, right? Uh, this is a way to actually bring together the, the back ends of these banks to, uh, to, to, to speed everything up and make everything more trustworthy in terms of how data is actually shared. Um, but you can also use this for a somewhat different fields, so that uh, for supply chain purposes. Uh, uh, and the particular example I love is the diamond supply chain. So there's been a lot of pressure in the diamond industry to keep blood diamonds out of circulation, what are called conflict diamonds. Diamonds that come from less than trustworthy places, they might employ slave labor, uh, they might have been used to buy guns. Um, and so there's a real concerted effort by that industry and by governments to keep those diamonds out of the supply chain, right? To keep them from being used. Um, and the, the, for 25 years, there's been a process called the Kimberly process, which is a tracing process that attaches a certificate to each diamond as it comes out of the mine and makes its way to the retail channel. Well, this is a system that not only involved a lot of paperwork, it was hard to really trust, right? When I see this certificate and I see these stamps where it was handed off from one party to the next by the time it got to the store, 
how do I trust this, right? How do I evaluate this as a consumer or even as a business, right? How do I know that this really came from where this uh, claim to So in addition to having uh, auditing and that sort of thing uh, uh, and inspectors, there is a real need for a system that would make this data set, this database, of how these diamonds flow through the system available to everybody in the system so that you can check digital signatures uh, for each of those participants, so that you can check um, with high integrity and confidence that the database was not hacked or corrupted or used to commit fraud, right? That this data actually got from where, you know, from the right place to the right place. And so that industry has been now spending two years moving to a distributed ledger uh, and is going to go into production uh, next year uh, using this system as essentially the title system for time. At some point next year, if, if you're buying a, a diamond as a retailer, maybe even as a consumer, and it's not actually in this ledger, uh, you should probably suspect it probably was stolen or came from a uh, non good source, right? So this is really cool. And there's companies that uh, are building this with the diamond industry. Um, but let me talk about a radically different uh, in, uh, place where we could use this technology, which is healthcare records. Now, it may seem ironic, here I am talking about a decentralized database where everybody has a copy of this data. Uh, and to apply that to something so sensitive and so uh, uh, personalized as medical data, right? But there's a really big problem out there, in, at least in the United States, and I think other countries, this is a problem as well, which is if you have a healthcare history uh, and you move, taking that history from one doctor to another means carrying a lot of paper records, right? Or when you go to see a specialist, that you have to pick the right set of records and show them to that person. And for many people, this is a burden. Right? This is the last thing you want to be thinking about if you're trying to get better, but the person you're caring for is trying to get better. And so uh, a lot of this uh, has to do not with the digitization of that data. You know, you can today ask for digital copies of a lot of the, this data, but how do you organize it? And more importantly, when you give it to a doctor, how do they know it actually came from a good source, came from another doctor, came from a testing line? Or if it's a prescription, the pharmacist wants to know for sure that it actually came from a doctor. So there are a lot of efforts out there now applying uh, blockchain technology to build not a database of health data, right? That data would still sit off-chain, but on-chain is to maintain uh, uh, basically a model for doing self-sovereign identity, which uh, we'll talk about a little bit, we'll talk more about it going forward, uh, and a way to attach uh, signatures and pointers and hashes of that data so that when somebody from their healthcare wallet, you know, very much like a Bitcoin wallet, presents that data to a doctor, that doctor can trust that it has high integrity. In fact, that doctor can discover other records that may be related to that issue, right? This is all really important. And there's companies now working on getting this done. Uh, and in a completely different field again, uh, in the renewable energy field, there are companies working to use blockchain technology to set up uh, renewable energy credits, right? So if you put solar cells on your roof in a country like uh, the United States or in China now, they have a system this, you get a special credit for the energy that you generate, right? Uh, and that might be a special bonus in terms of, the, you know, how much money you can make uh, 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 because there are other people willing to spend more for green energy, willing to spend more when they know that the kilowatt hour that they're consuming came from, you know, again, a good source, right? Um, kind of like the diamonds, right? Uh, so, the, uh, uh, so in the renewable energy uh, uh, community, there are several projects now that are late stage pilot that are going to go into production next year, which are about building these, uh, building networks for trading these credits, right? For making so that buyers and sellers can meet up. Now, and there's an accounting system that makes sure nobody's inventing credits out of thin air, right? Uh, or uh, uh, performing up to any other kind of fraud. And by the way, you can apply this to carbon emissions, you can apply this to cap and trade kinds of systems. Basically, anytime you have a marketplace where people have objects of value, they want to represent digitally, whether they are abstract things like credits or free flyer miles, or they're physical things like tied to a diamond or tied to property, like I mentioned with my house in the beginning. Um, this is a great system for being able to track and trace all of this. So now that I've kind of laid out the groundwork, uh, let me talk really quickly about what we're doing at Hyperledger. So Hyperledger is a global cross industry community of communities advancing business blockchain technologies, right? It sounds like a lot of fun. What it is is a collection of uh, developers working for lots of different companies, uh, lots of different organizations, 
working together to build uh, building blocks for distributed ledgers and smart contract systems, uh, uh, and, and coming together under the auspices of the Linux Foundation to make this work. Now, the Linux Foundation has been around for quite a while. It too is old, like like Dave Vincent. Um, uh, it's about 16 years old, and it was built to uh, serve as a gathering point, serve as a balancing point for the Linux ecosystem. Uh, to try to connect with developers working on the Linux operating systems, help them have a governance mechanism, help them understand how to integrate the efforts of thousands of different contributors, and ship something that there's an update pretty much once every two or three weeks to the Linux kernel. Uh, how, did, how do you get this train to just keep barreling down the tracks, right? Uh, and, and, and in fact, 25 years after the Linux launch, um, you know, we're seeing still 2,500 people contributing to each version of the Linux kernel, right? It comes out every few weeks. An amazing type of operation. So getting that to work, but also getting the vendor community around Linux to, to, to play nice with each other, right? There's nothing worse than as a developer than when you get caught in the middle of two businesses trying to claim to be the company around some open source technology, right? So I have to worry about is that company going to survive? Um, are their venture capital uh, owners going to change their business model and suddenly now I'll have to pay a license for what I was using for free? Um, this was a real threat in the Linux community and the foundation came about uh, to try to keep those interests balanced and help provide guidance to those companies to figure out how they could build on top of something like Linux without having to destroy it, right? Without having to own it. Um, and the Linux Foundation's model as an industry consortium was to get them to pay for it, you know, get them to pay for that service, right? And support all the activities that developers are starting. So it, that, the Linux Foundation then expanded beyond the Linux operating system. They went into security with Let's Encrypt, into networking with a project called ODAP, into cloud computing with the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and something called Cloud Foundry. Uh, they got into automotive space, like using Linux inside of automobiles, uh, and other industries like the telco industry. They, um, how many of you have heard of Node.js? Uh, uh, so the Node.js community was hosted at the Linux Foundation. Uh, and with blockchain technology, it became clear that uh, there was a need for a new kind of effort. About two years ago, a bunch of companies came to the Linux Foundation and said, there's something going on in the cryptocurrency space that seems to you to be the kinds of services you provide, right? Means that's the kind of guidance that you can give uh, as the Linux Foundation to make the developers play well together and help the companies to play well. And we realized, uh, when that, as that was happening, it was important to look one layer lower at the underlying technology because we're a nonprofit, we're a foundation, but we're also geeks, right? And uh, understanding that there's the hype up here and there's the, you know, the starry-eyed visionary, visionary types, but really we wanted to focus on the meat Potatoes of getting things done, shipping product, right? And we knew that it's an early. Uh, this is an early day. This is uh, an early time in the blockchain community, and so uh, and, and there's a lot of different ideas out there about how to do consensus mechanisms, what kind of language to write smart. You know, in 1993, we had pretty much you know text-based uh, web clients. We had Gopher. That, no one of you remember Gopher, I'm sure. It's like a predecessor to the web. Um, we had uh, an internet that was decentralized, but it was very disorganized too. The early, you know, there weren't really the standards, especially around security, especially around JavaScript. JavaScript was just invented in 96, right? Uh, uh, that really made it difficult to build compelling web applications. And at that time, no one knew which, you know, security approach would work best, which dynamic content would work best. The right thing to do at that time was to just dive in. And start investing, start making, building things, right? Start setting up websites, start seeing what works and what doesn't work. And that community came together to build what we know as the web today through competition between different products. And so we felt we wanted to do that inside of Hyperlink. We wanted to go and canvas the landscape and say, what are the interesting, compelling, blockchain related technology projects out there that we can provide a home for, right? That we can bring together under a common umbrella. Uh, and sit next to each other and encourage all of them to mature, to get to a 1.0 shipping product, right? To become usable for businesses and to distinguish themselves from each other uh, in interesting ways, right? So we have kind of two tiers of these kinds of projects. We have frameworks, uh, and I'll describe what some of these are, uh, and then uh, uh, such as uh, frameworks such as Fabric, which is the core uh, of a lot of the projects that I mentioned in the 
use cases there, uh, as well as tooling to help make this work. Tooling uh, to run this stuff in the cloud and manage uh, the deployment of these kinds of nodes on a distributed database. Uh, something called Explorer, which uh, is a way to navigate these systems uh, and see where, where, how do these watching you know, data elements are they connected to each other. Uh, and something called Composer, which I'll show you. Um, And so it's important to understand we aren't here pushing one particular network. You think of things like Ethereum. Ethereum is a network, right? It's a global computer. Um, and so there's a lot of uh, value in talking about, hey, I've got one big system that I'm going to deploy a distributed app to that's available locally. Um, but we felt that, it was, that these networks would be built independently based on different tool sets, right? Nor are we a standards body uh, trying to dictate, you know, here's the interfaces, here's the, you know, the, the the APIs, here, here's how these systems tie together. We thought there were other organizations working on those kinds of technologies. We pretty firmly for ourselves, I mean, this is hard to read, uh, in, the, in the implementer and tech. We're the ones building these underlying technologies so that each of you could go and, as appropriate, stand up these networks, stand up these communities, right, uh, uh, using these technologies to implement what you need to start. Uh, so, the, and our goals are to, to bring these steps together, to grow the community, to provide a neutral, open home for these technologies. As many of you who work in the open source community know, the real value isn't just in getting this free software uh, uh, and, 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 and using it uh, you know, outside your business decision at no cost. The, the real value is collaboration, right? It's being able to dive in and when you have a question, having a community of people who can tell you, here's how this stuff is, works together, here's how it fits together. Right? Or here, here was the discussion we had about a decision that now is implemented with the company. So that you're a better programmer because you understand what's going on under the covers, right? The real magic as well is to say, you know, if I've got a, if a feature I want to extend or a bug that I want to fix, I can fix it myself because I have the source code. But I want to push that upstream. I want to work with the upstream community and, 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 and maybe you can join as a board member of the team. And if we do our job right, just like any other open source project that just does its job right, that becoming a, 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 a core contributor doesn't require working for the right company, it doesn't require paying a fee, it doesn't require, it doesn't require you know, uh, you know, you know uh, going to the right events or anything like that. All it requires is participation. All it requires is diving in uh, and engaging with the rest of the developers and building something new. And so our job is to build these communities around each of these code bases. Uh, and to educate folks about how it works. Um, and in fact, we just put up a training course for uh, uh, business blockchain technologies on something called edX, which is the premier MOOC out there, the educational open, open education content platform. Um, we have 30,000 people sign up for this course. If you're interested in this, just go to edX.org and search on blockchain technology, right? So educating the developer community, both at places like this, but also um, to get hands on with this code is, is a big part of what we do. Um, and to walk a little bit into each of these different frameworks, um, as I mentioned, Fabric is one that, that most of you, if you, if you first get engaged, will probably work with. Uh, uh, it is uh, a most mature one. Uh, it's written in Go, which is a modern, secure programming language. I don't know if many of you have touched it yet. It's very much like C, but kind of clean. Um, it's really worth your while, and in most cases, it's not, it's not a difficult language to do. Um, and you can also use it to run smart contracts themselves, written in Go, or written in JavaScript, uh, or written in Java, right? Uh, so that's, that's pretty cool as well. You don't have to learn an esoteric programming language to be able to start building smart contracts. Um, we also have one called uh, a hyperledgerity, which is an implementation of the self-sovereign identity uh, uh, kind of principles that uh, that to mention. This is a, a tool that you would use to build identity networks, right? You build it to implement that medical data uh, example that you present. Uh, or uh, it'll actually be the technology, uh, probably the technology you use for something that was announced yesterday uh, by uh, the Bank Association of the Philippines uh, that Amihan and, and uh, the uh, uh, BDO and many of the other banks here have well, signed up to, which is uh, a, a, basically a self-sovereign identity network for uh, the banking community and its customers, right? So at some point, I don't know if it's next year, <laughs> if it's a year after that, uh, 
uh, very soon, you will have a self-sovereign identity. You will have a wallet that will basically be you. your digital presence. Um, it will track your assets. You know, not only you know, uh, officially your balances in your banks, but maybe even cryptocurrencies, maybe even healthcare records eventually in the long term. And you'll have this interface for the assets that you trust and for the information that's private to you. And the blockchain will be used as a way to find and share that data and do that in private confidence. And Indy is the technology behind it. So that's a really cool project. The other one I'll just mention here real quick is something called Burrow. So I, I mentioned that Ethereum and Bitcoin and those other communities are on the app uh, kind of separate from what we do. But where there is technology in those communities that is interesting in an enterprise application, we want to bring it in. We want to make it part of what we do. And so Burrow is an implementation of the Ethereum virtual machine that can be used to then plug into the software and eventually to collaborate with the other partners. Uh, uh, and, and so that's the way to say, here's, you know, you can take, if you are an Ethereum developer, and you've been writing code in Solidity, you can bring that code unmodified to a private or commissioned community uh, ledger, and that's pretty awesome. So, um, what's common about all these projects that we host uh, is not the technical approach. They do have very different ideas, very different goals, um, but we try to make these more like a family of projects. So, they're all under the same open source license, the Apache license, perhaps not surprising. Um, uh, it's the easiest license to work with, and it means you can embed it inside of your commercial products and services without any uh, worry from the legal perspective. Right? Um, we also make sure that everybody who contributes to this code. Uh, uh, grants the right to redistribute value. This might sound silly, this might be a step against steps, of course, this is what, how things work. But it may make so many uh, companies don't realize when they're dead to work on open source projects what that actually means. And so we try to make sure those companies are well informed and that the developers make sure that they check with their company before contributing that code, right? We also offer collaboration tools, you know, obviously access to GitHub, but we really believe in mailing lists and email being them. Red blood cells and collaboration in the open source community. But we're modern, you know, we're not all, you know, old people like me. Um, so we also realized that we can do chat, we can do other types of collaboration tools, bug trackers. And so we provide kind of common infrastructure so that if you're a core developer on one platform and you want to hop over to another, uh, that it's easy to do. You put some familiar patterns out. Um, we also make sure that the projects as they write code, they don't just work on it privately behind closed doors and then throw it over the wall, that they actually make their activities public. Uh, and in doing that, make sure that any of you who want to not only see how the sausage is made, so to speak, uh, how, the, how, the, how the hard work is done, that any of you can see that, but that you can also participate, get your questions answered, but maybe become a star developer on an open source project yourself, which is a really fun thing to do. Um, we ourselves at the Linux Foundation don't write any code. This is an important thing. Think of us as like air traffic control. What we're really doing is working with the rest of the community at all sorts of different companies and try to come together and make this a number. And at the end of the day, again, if we do our job right, these projects become big enough and, and diverse enough from a vendor perspective that you always have another option, right? If you do want to buy uh, watching as a service hosting from somebody, you always have other options. If you want to uh, hire somebody to build code for you, you'll be able to take it on yourself or find somebody else to the project. This is important, because that's where really it's like the scientific, the scientific method applied to open source software. Uh, uh, it's, it's a way of guaranteeing that, that good ideas actually get, get built and bad ideas get flushed out. Um, and, and so that's, that's kind of our goal to make up on this um, We've been around for almost two years. It was officially launched, I think, in December of 2015, just before I joined. Um, we've got five different frameworks and three different tools in this infrastructure. These are all independent projects with thriving development communities around them. And we're increasingly companies that are starting to provide support services around them. We've had three and a half million lines of code contributed across 25,000 different commits. I personally, lines of code is a money metric, but uh, we really just mean this as a way to say there's a lot of activity going on. Uh, lots of different members uh, spread out all over the world, but companies that are involved in supporting the effort. Uh, and we were a really deep meetup. In fact, we launched a meetup uh, group uh, here in Manila, and we're about to launch one in Cebu. Uh, so if any of you are interested in being, getting together face-to-face -face with other developers, core developers, working on uh, different hyper-leisure projects, be sure to get connected to that. Uh, and now I want to show you, just really quickly, walk through some of the 
Poster is a is a IDE for building blockchain business applications. It's a suite of tools that allow you to quickly model the kind of application you want to build, and then it automatically generates REST APIs for interacting with this network, and as well as quickly generating an Angular.js based application that talks to this blockchain application. It's it's a really quick way to get started. Uh, there's a lot of content there, but if you go to hyperledger.org, there's a number of different resources available there. Just click through the links, jump onto the chat channels at chat.hyperledger.org, start asking questions. Take the edX course, that's the easiest way to become really a, a, a pro at understanding how this works and to get started on development. Uh, and engage with the community, because all of them building this code are just all like you as well. We're all geeks, we're all developers, trying to build something. So, thank you very much. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brian Gondor. Yes, Executive Director of Hyperledger, sir, here in, in the center of the stage. Now, we may give you the chance to ask questions if you have some. Are there any questions? We will give you now the floor before Sir Brian will go, we'll go back to his country. After you, after this song, actually. Yeah. So, do you have any questions, guys? I will give you the floor now to ask questions. Any? Questions? Okay. Better guy. Alright. I'll stick around for a little bit. Okay. Okay. Sir, um, in here in the Philippines, we usually uh, take pictures. It's called selfie. So, it's okay. Um, <laughs> Can you have a groupie together? Sure. <laughs> guys! Let's have three cheese. Okay, guys, you got it. And oh, serving son. It's not serving son. Okay. All right, thank you so much. And the next serving son, you invited to be stay here to give the token. Yes. Yes. And thank you so much for Brian for giving us very informative talk about blockchain. Alright, once again, ladies and gentlemen, let's give them a round, round of applause, please. Sir Brian, sir, with some. Thank you so much. So, thank you, Alice, for seeing Sir Brian. So, if you have any questions, you can approach him. Okay. How about you, Alice? All right, finally, guys, welcome to the Blog Summit 2017. Hashtag making the NPS. Okay, so, so we are your host, Wire Janelle Desus. And I am Joey, and uh, we are warming, welcoming you here in the Blog Summit. And every year, I love about June, every year, must. Uh, no malaki yung mga audience natin. We are getting bigger and bigger. Yes, and with that, guys, we would like to ask sino ba dito yung mga first timer? Raise a hand, first timer. Oh, first timer. Oh, sorry, guys. Kasi marami kayo. Yes, to look forward with our different talks. Sino dito yung mga students? Students! Wow! Hello! Sino dito yung mga working na? Sino dito yung mga working na?
DevOps and Cybersecurity. Okay, so mamaya natin yan for the breakout session. And without uh, any further ado, let's move on with our panel discussion on blockchain.
Next, sir, um, sir James. Uh, so my name is James. Why 